Hey everyone, what's going on? Uh, today, I figured I would dig through my safe and show you something that's a little unusual. Um, I have the Beretta 950B, also known as the Minx. Um, I tend to like firearms that are a little strange, or maybe not the most practical firearms. And I also love Berettas. I have several Berettas, and you hear about a lot of people who just love Glocks. Well, that's how I am with Berettas. Love Berettas. Uh, this particular one right here, like I said before, is the Beretta 950B. They started making these in the early 50s, I think 1952, and they made them to about 2003. Uh, the 950 was made in 25 ACP and 22 short. This particular one is, as you can see right there, uh, it is 22 short. And I got to tell you, I would love to get one in 25 ACP. But I think if I were faced with the choice of a 25 ACP or a 22 short, I would have gotten the 22 short just because it's it's kind of like an oddball caliber to get in a handgun. You don't see too many 22 short handguns. So I, I definitely would have opted for this one. Um, and as you can see right there, it's made in Brazil. So now they made the, the um, Beretta 950. And then they made the 950B. The 950B was actually made after 1968, so this is a newer model. When I had first gotten it a few years back, I had checked, and I think it was made around 1976 or 77. So it's not a new one, and it's not a really old one. It's just kind of in between. As far as collector value, I don't think it really has that much collector value. I just think it's a great, great firearm. I think it's a lot of fun to shoot. Um, I mean, it's a 22 short. It's kind of crazy. Um, if you're familiar with the uh, Beretta 21A, the Bobcats. Oh, by the way, one other thing. The 25 is known as the Beretta Jetfire. The 25 caliber is the Jetfire. This one's also known as the Minx. And um, like the 21A, it's very similar. It has the tip-up barrel, which is pretty cool. Um you figure in the 25 caliber version, it would be good for people, you know, maybe who are arthritic, weak, have trouble with slides. I know 25 is not the best defensive caliber, but, you know, again, it beats the sharp stick. Nobody wants a sharp stick. Okay. And then you just actuate that right here. Now you can also... Oops! That was not good. You can also cycle the slide back that way. And it is single action. And we have a hammer right there. Don't want to really let that... Okay, put that... Don't like dry firing rim fires. Now, one of the things that I don't really like about this gun is it has the seven-round uh, magazine. <clears throat> you don't see these on the market too much. When I have seen them, I see them on either eBay or Gunbroker, and they usually go for between $75 and $100. Well, I just have one magazine with this handgun, and to be honest with you, that's what I'm going to keep it at because I am not spending $75 to $100 for a magazine, especially for one that I'm not going to conceal carry or anything. Um, I mean, it's not a self-defense gun. It's just a, To me, it's, it's just a really, really cool gun, and you can see we have this uh, heel release here. Pretty small, too. Just give you some measurements here. So from the very front... Well, let's put that there. From the very front near the uh, barrel uh, to the hammer, it's uh, both just about four and a half inches. And then I would say to the uh, beaver tail there, it's about four and three quarter inches. And then from the top to the bottom, we got about three and a half inches there. And you know, it's also a pretty thin gun too. Don't get nervous about my hand gun. As you can see, it was uh, already checked. It's probably about maybe seven eighths of an inch. Yeah, I'd call it seven-eighths of an inch, maybe a teeny bit more, those plastic grips there. I think there are also some um, aftermarket wooden grips uh, that you can put on there as well. Um, I have got to find one of these in 25 ACP. I just love them in 25 ACP. And I remember when I, uh, when I first saw these, I actually thought they made them in the 22 LR, which I would have liked to pick one up in 22 LR. Unfortunately, I made a mistake. It was actually the 21A. And I really like the 21A. I actually have one of those in 25 uh, ACP. And I would love to pick up a 21A in 22, L 22 LR. Uh, but so far, that really hasn't worked out for me. 
but the bad thing about the 21 is that it's a little bit thicker than that. It's a little bulkier, which is, which I like for shooting, not so much for, for putting in your pocket. Uh, 21A, when I do have a pocket gun, it's a little... I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable, but it's a little wide in the handles. Uh, it's actually more comfortable to carry a Keltec, and then I've also tried carrying my 32 Tomcat. Not the most comfortable uh, pocket carry gun. I'd rather put that on a small holster. Uh, another cool thing is, I think I've told you guys before, I really like uh, these Uncle Mike's pocket holsters. Um, these were going for about $9 at Walmart. I think they stopped selling them because one day I went there and they had them for like $4 on clearance, so I bought a couple because... Yeah, pretty good just to store a gun in anyway, but if you look here, it just kind of like almost totally folds in there. And again, it's a pretty light gun. That's a size 3 holster, so it's one of the slightly larger ones. But I don't like the smaller ones because I like to have the, uh, I like to have the um, trigger like totally covered and, and whatnot, so I can draw it just fine. But again, I'm not really drawing this anyway, I just kind of want to store it in that so it doesn't get scuffed up or messed up anymore. So just one of those things where I wanted to uh, bring this out here for you just to just to check it out and and see it because I think it's a really cool gun and I notice that sometimes if you go to gun shops you do see these every now and then. Of course you don't see that I don't see the 25 ACPs now that I'm actively looking for one and when I do see them on Gun Broker um, there are some really, really crazy prices for them. I, I'll see people asking like four something for these, and I will not pay four hundred and something for these. Uh, if you go to some, um, as as of the publishing of this video, uh, some online gun shops, and even a couple of my local ones are selling. Uh, I think it's the Beretta. I want to say it's the M1955 or the M1951. It's a 9mm 8 round. And those are just going for $2.99. And then there's another version which escapes me. I apologize. And I think it's about $3.50. And, uh, you know, they're really nice, sturdy handguns. They were precursors of the Beretta 92. Very cool guns. Honestly, as much as I would love to have this in 25, for that price, I would actually, you know, go for one of those two that I just mentioned because, you know, they shoot 9mm. You could carry them if you wanted to, although I'd probably just want to keep them more for like a, just like a range shoot and um, as a collectible, because like I said, I do really, really enjoy Berettas. I love Berettas. I do have a couple that I carry, but not these. They're, um, they're newer Berettas. Um, I, recently, I have a Nano that I've been carrying, which is pretty cool. And for a while, a uh, Beretta PX4 Storm, which is awesome for those of you who um don't know much about the Beretta PX4 Storm. I actually have a video I did a few years back. Uh, check it out. It's a good um, introduction to the Beretta, the PX4 Storm. Okay, so again, my uh, my little Beretta 950 um, 950B video is just about complete. Uh, keep an eye out for my other stuff. I do have some other uh, handgun videos coming out. So you guys have a uh, have a good day, and uh, please like if you like, subscribe if you want. See you later.